So the first one that we're going to explore uh, is something we call social creativity. Now, what picture comes to your mind when you think about creativity? You know, for parents, it might be the smile on your kids' faces when they're drawing pictures. Uh, for speakers, it could be their joyful expression when telling stories. But where does the word creativity come from? Well, the creativity, um, the word create comes from the, the Latin creare, which means to form out of nothing. And this is the version of creativity that we celebrate in magazines, in news articles, in social media. The story often showcases remarkable creations that are conjured out of thin air by the mind of a true genius in the art. But let's take a step further back, shall we, than creare, to the Proto-Indo-European root cur. Cur means to make something grow. So creativity means to make something grow. Ah, now that's very different. You know that creativity doesn't happen in isolation. Of course you do. It's a dialogue between the artist and the audience. Just as a musician needs a concert to perform, an actor needs a stage, and a child needs an audience for their online homework and their online creativity. You simply cannot grow creatively without a community of feedback. How do you create a community of feedback online these days? Well, last week I shared a video on how I use these unlisted YouTube videos to share my kids' homework with grandparents, aunts, and uncles. This is not only beneficial for the kids, but the grandparents' sense of feeling connected in an otherwise isolated world, especially today. So how do we share our creativity with others? Sometimes we do we share videos. Maybe we share videos with the grandparents. That's an example. Uh, maybe we take pictures. We just like take a picture of like, hey, look at this creative work and then just send it out. Uh, or do we sometimes keep it to ourselves? Maybe we think, eh, not quite ready for prime time, <laughs> not ready for sharing. That's the thing. Sometimes we think our creative work isn't good enough. We'll send them a better version. We'll send them the perfect version. We live in this internet obsessed with perfection and lacking in authenticity. Every Instagram post is carefully curated, photoshopped and scheduled. Some think that if we show a more perfect version of ourselves, that others will admire and they'll respect us more, <laughs> like they'll respect us more when many of us, we just want to feel like we're not the only ones who are struggling here. Have you ever felt that? Am I, am I the only one who's struggling? Everybody else seems so great. The reality is, like, we're all struggling right now. This is totally new. We have not been in this situation. Nobody can prepare you for something like this. And you know what makes it worse? What makes it worse is an unconscious artificial intelligence or AI that focuses on the milliseconds of watch time rather than true character. It looks for what makes people stop and watch, it gives that priority over what's going to encourage others the most, what's going to be most beneficial for others. Now, it's not all bad. 
um, some influencers today are certainly bringing authenticity to an otherwise superficial society. They are recognizing that we connect more through our struggles than our perfection. You know, this uh, Chinese New Year, I'll tell you a little story. That's all right. This Chinese New Year, we asked our kids to say some Chinese greetings on video. What I said at the beginning, San Tai Gin Hong, right? It says, may you be healthy. It's a, of course, it's a very relevant greeting for today, but you can imagine like a really young, my youngest is five years old saying that. <laughs> you say, uh, San Tai Gin Han? San Tai Gin Kong? San Tai Gin, ah! <laughs> and it, it's, it's that struggle, right? Like saying something new, like learning a language. Have you ever like stumbled over some words? I mean, that's, that's just normal, right? So when I made a Chinese New Year video, I could have just posted uh, the parts, the only parts where they got the greeting correct. But showing the outtakes is what made the entire video so much more authentic. We need to celebrate struggle because it means that we're learning. If the grandparents only saw the correct version, they may have thought that saying these greetings was easy for them. And, and this is what we often do with many of our posts online. We only see the end of the story rather than the struggle along the way. But their struggle showed that they put some serious effort towards learning these greetings and that they really do have a desire to connect with the grandparents and their language. How can we create this community that celebrates the struggle? Maybe we can make a post. Um, with the hashtag celebrate struggle. So if you make a post related to hashtag celebrate struggle, uh, just post it on any of your social medias. I'll take a look at it uh, later this week and let's encourage each other by giving that feedback. Feedback is more than saying, oh, good job. No, it's a dialogue that prompts more discussion. You see, feedback requires that we provide some direction for future action. Creative ideas can only grow beyond us when it drives others to action. Drives others to action. This is really important. It's not just about an idea and it's not just about saying, great job. It's about, hmm, what is the roadmap for improvement? Because when we drive enough people to action, we have a community. And when communities get together for a common purpose, we have a movement.